Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Time for week 10 of Raw. And this is, well, numerous mode and stuff like that. So, I know I did upload Heat, which is the Raw pre show, yesterday. And then what I did was that I basically tried to upload Raw, but then just didn't have stuff like that. Anyway, um, just what's name it to last night. So, doing it later on today. Well, doing it right now, I guess. 10 man battle row for the championship. Of course, I did announce this matchup at, um, I believe I announced it on Heat, as I think so. So, in 10 man battle row, number one tenders for the WWE championship. Whoever wins that matchup becomes the number one tender for Bobby Lashley's newly won WWE championship. Participants of the matchup include Alberto Rio, Ron Reigns, CM Punk, Paul Cruz, The Miz, H. Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Randy Orton, Magnus, Ty Skitt. Paul Cruz is former Incarnate Champion, The Miz. He's the former number one contender for the Incarnate Cham- Championship. Um, Ron Reigns, he is, he's is he been associated with the with the WWE Championship. And then, of course, CM Punk. He has been the former WWE Champion. So, necessarily, it should just be revolving around Reigns and Punk to see who faces off against Lashley. But... No, Tim and Bell Roll. Hopefully, we can get a new contender. And if we get out of Reigns or Punk, well then, eh, I won't, I won't be mad. I won't be mad, I guess. So anyway, mainly kicking things off here. <laughs> We're getting super head start here, and I know this is like a very short episode of Raw. Usually, my Raw SmackDown and any so well, usually my Raw and SmackDown episodes, they are of course like thirty some minutes. Usually, anything ranging from like. 32 to 33 to 34 or 35 minutes Sometimes it could even be 38 because that's like the uh, that average time it takes you know for all these matches to end off so but for raw here It's like 20 some minutes uh, For this one raw and this one is 20 some minutes, so that's That's not necessarily all that good since this run for raw is necessarily 20 some minutes like 28 probably so hopefully I collect Talk a whole lot for like two to three more minutes just to at least make it half an hour. But I'm not necessarily sure to be fair. So, anyway, it's gonna be a short episode of Raw. After this, we got. And I know this episode of Raw could probably be shorter than Heat. Well, that's not good. If Raw becomes shorter than Heat. Then that's when you know that you have messed something up on numerous mode. So that that can't suck, that really does can't suck, but okay. Well, I'm not gonna bother to try and fix anything here. So it's gonna be like twenty seven something minutes, twenty eight probably as well. So anyway, might as well, might as well announce the rest of the match card. So and also we are live from Dallas, Texas for this episode of Raw, same enough for heat, stuff like that. Um anyway. Now we're contenders for Rod Tatum Tells Hardy Boys. They still have the Ranch Claws against the Brood. Facing off against another team who also have the Ranch Claws against the Brood. Breeze Angle, since you can't do triple threat tag team matches in this game, we're just going to make one of these men lose their Ranch Claws. So, of course, Hardy Boys, they've had the Ranch Claws longer than Breeze Angle. Breeze Angle have only been the most recent challengers for the Brood's Raw Tag Tells. That's that, though. So, Priest Angle versus Hardy Boys, whoever, whichever tag team wins this one, they will become the contenders for the Raw Tag Team Championships. So, that right there, that is going to be good. Hopefully. Next matchup, we got Big Cass versus Brian Cage. This will be Brian Cage's second matchup here. And Big Cass this is like his third or fourth matchup here in the Universe Mode. But we shall see. That's that. We have Manic 1 1 against Batista. That's the third matchup, so that right there, let's see what Batista could do. Batista, of course, he has proven himself to be a very tough competitor here on Universe Mode. He has defeated Goldberg in a last man standing matchup. So, yeah, that explains that explains enough for itself when he answered Goldberg's open last man standing match challenge. And Batista actually beat Goldberg in like three minutes, so that was impressive in itself. After that, we got Sami Zayn one one against Silas Young. Silas Young, he did defeat Brian Cage, but it was via Brian Cage actually forfeiting during his match against Silas Young, which you think will be the other way around since Brian Cage in real life, he's very tough. Also, Silas Young, but 
you know, Sai Sung's heel, Brian Cage is like a face in real life if you compare those two. So, well, it's it's whatever. And who won that matchup? I think it was the Hardy Boys. I right, whatever. Um, I'm not paying attention. I just want to quickly get over because uh, I did a voiceover for this last night, and so didn't fully work out stuff like that. I decided to like retry with like fixing two more matches. Luckily for two matches I retried, it still had the same winners. Two matches I retried were this big cast Brian Cage matchup, and it had it has the same winner. So at least I changed there, and then I also retried. Batista versus Manic, and that has the same winner as well. And I think now nah, I didn't buy or retry Sam Zayn versus Silas Young. That was that was okay. So that's that. Anyway, next up, the is going to be the ECW anonymous pre-show that does not have a name yet. Well, at least I'm not going to say name. You guys have to try to figure it out. You guys got into probably tomorrow. Shall see. Wait, what time is it now? It's five thirty-five. On a Saturday, December 9th. Okay. The last one didn't really matter. So, got enough time. I could probably pull off these three pre show, hopefully. I also want to probably do more GM mode. Not SmackDown GM mode, but I'm thinking of something else. But not Raw GM mode either. Specifically, something else. This whole channel is going to be just revolving around Book Revolution. Well, to be fair, it's, it's been for like the good part of a year, to be fair. I've been having the game since like what 2012, 2013, 2014, something like that. So yeah, I have done many matches on Pokemon Evolution, but of course, your channel is only a year old, a year and a couple months. All right, so anyway, now Big Cat has a couple of kicks there. Hopefully, he doesn't do her crown nails that lift up. Okay, her crown by Brian Cage. Okay, I like that. That was a nice counter. Cage with the upper hand. Never mind. Gets quickly shift momentum. As Big Cass is the upper hand, rope break for Brian Cage though, has him off the ropes, and yep. Well, there goes Brian Cage. He went flying from that kick moments ago. Big Cass, ah, I thought he was going to do the overdrop. I thought he was going to do the overdrop. Sleeper hold onto Brian Cage, going to try to suffocate Cage. Ch nice change into uh, um, a chin lock, I guess. Or more of a different type of modified sleeper. Cage has him, well, he had him. Cass has him. Both these men have a back and forth contest. Brian Cage ran into that big boot. Figure four. That luck. Well, that Brian Cage was gonna counter that. He did. Ex he did escape it though. Big Cass has him. Oh, about to do a power bomb there. Brian Cage definitely does not want to be in the receiving end of that. But n nor will he want to be in the receiving end of those big boots. Been two of them so far. Cass with the upper hand on Brian Cage. This is a pre born matchup. R really is. Cage now getting a couple of kicks. I don't blame the star rating. This sucks. Should have put this on heat. There we are. Now big cast. That um, leg stream smash hold. Oh, it's Brian Cage wearing down the legs of the big man. Brian Cage can have to start doing that big cast. The bigger man in this matchup, which is... Big Cass, but you gotta give the strength advantage to most likely Brian Cage here. But we shall see if Big Cass gonna try to rip off the leg if he could. Not gonna necessarily rip it off like a twig. Because I don't think he necessarily really really could, I guess. Figure for a let off now. He could have done his finisher. But not Big Cass. And he taps, well, not Big Cass. Brian Cage, he taps out to the figure for a let off from Big Cass. 2.1 rated matchup. Um, okay, there. Yeah. So, Big Cass defeats Brian Cage. By submission figure for Leadock. At least that was going to be something else, but... Okay, anyway, next matchup. Batista versus Manic. I'm not going to call Manic suicide until we can make him more credible. But, that's that, I guess. Now, the ammo Batista, this man, he's been... Well, he did win the 10-man Battle Royal Momentum match on Raw. And then, of course, he did answer Goldberg's open challenge at the Over the Limit Raw exclusive pay-per-view, which was after week four. This is week ten. Well, it was like during week four. The Raw episode, the week four episode, and the pay-per-view was on week four as well. So, yeah, so it was like back then in week four. Batista did answer Goldberg's 
open last man stand challenge and he did actually defeat Goldberg in it as well. So that right there is a feat impressive in itself from Batista. Guess uh, guess it was uh, guess it was an accurate one since Batista he did win a ten minute battle momentum match that Goldberg was in. Not to mention Batista I mean but Goldberg no, not not Batista Goldberg. He was one of the first three men to be eliminated. He was the third man to be eliminated, I think. So, yeah. Pretty interesting. And was it by Batista? I'm not sure about that one, though. Well, I am sure about is that the only matchup I'm interested in is the 10 man battle role to turn a normal contender for the championship as, as the high flying ability of Manic. Definitely gonna be entertaining to watch, at least. As did Nail Spin, Heel Kick, trying to. Batista, he's trying to fight back. Manic trying to fight back as well. As some Bridges Suplex. He's fun. Ryan said that's the. Very visible rope break, Manic. Chopper there, kick. Grab some, and another bridge suplex. That is a rope break as well. That one was a little bit farther away from ropes, but okay. Cam clutch now, Manic. He's he's bringing the fight to Batista here. Imagine if Manic wins this matchup. Imagine how impressive that would be. Donald stretch now, Batista. You can tell Batista is taking. He's being taken off his game here. Batista definitely getting surprised by all these. Maneuvers for Manic, but now he's probably angry. Well, I thought he was going to do something else. Scuba roll up by Manic. He could probably have a victory here. Can this one be it? And two count. That was close. Manic, the man they also caused suicide, but we're not going to call him suicide yet. We're going to keep him as Manic until I just decide to call him suicide. Anyway, now Batista off the football chair. That was kind of random. You don't necessarily see Batista doing that all the, match, all the much. But now... Man, he tried doing our bridge suplex. Nine tamer. Two Batista knee across the back of the head and the back of the neck. Of course, not necessarily a nice position to be in from that line tamer. Batista with headlock onto Manic. Some tells me Manic's gonna have a nasty fall. When Batista lets go of the headlock, if Manic does fall, yes, exactly what I was talking about. Right through that full wheelchair. Batista suplex thought that was gonna be a brain buster, but no. Now to a cross face. Didn't have it on for that long. Both men, they better get back inside the ring. Not risk the airman getting counted out. Mac, he gets side ring count. Hey, Batista, he's on count eight. Now, Mac, he need, just needs to hope that he gets a lucky roll of the dice. Batista on count of nine. And Mac, he wins the matchup. By count, Batista got on the ring apron as soon as the referee counted ten. As soon as the visible CPU referee counted ten. And well, ladies and gentlemen, Manic pulls off a major upset. He just defeated Batista. Okay then. Okay, I like that. I like that kind of. I like it. I like it. So Manic, he, he gets more momentum. He just defeated Batista. Not not very easy, but that German suplex may give Batista's head bouncing off the floor and probably the, perhaps the steel guardrail, steel barrier, the barricade, where you want caught. Definitely did. Um. Definitely do the number on Batista's back and. Definitely the back of the neck, definitely back of the head. Also, of course, it was after the lion tamer submission tone as well. Sami Zayn, hurry up and get inside the ring. Come on, just get inside the ring, Sammy. Thank you. No, get stay inside the ring. Oh my god, stay inside the ring, will you? Okay, stay in there until the bell rings. Stay in there until the bell rings. Just yes. okay, okay. Well, anyway, what else was I trying to say? But manic now. But he's probably highly credible here. Probably have a chance at the X Division Championship. We don't know. We all know that Ricochet will be defending his X Division Championship against Cody Rhodes at, at Raw's next pay view. Which here on Raw, we do have the next pay view. Not gonna say the name of it. I already have it written down. I'm gonna say the name of it for Week Eleven, which is gonna be the next episode of Raw. And then after that, we got Week Twelve. Week Twelve, of course, is gonna be the Go Home Show. And then we have the Raw pay view. And then after that, I believe SmackDown has their peer view. Then East Day has their peer view. And then after that, so on, so on, and so forth with either joint branded or like different orders. Stuff like that. For the peer view. Stuff. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. So, so Raw, they have the next peer view. After Raw, SmackDown have a peer view. East Day have a peer view. Then I believe SmackDown has a peer view again. And then Raw, they have a peer view. And then there's a joint branded show. And then ECW is somewhere in between that, something like that. I think I remember the order. I mean, that's a rope break. I felt like I could have pulled away Silas Young. 
And if not, be a very, very close two count. Unless, well, of course, we wouldn't know because Zayn just happened to do it right by the ropes. Silas Young now has the legs. Has up Sami Zayn. Well, he had him. Zayn can try to fight back here. Nails that back suplex. Now, Sami Zayn. Have to try to think. Well, never mind. I was about to say. Has to try to think of what moves to try to keep down Silas Young. Apparently, not even think of in time. Silas Young. Upper hand on Sammy now. Sammy on count two. He's holding on to his knee a little bit. Silas Young jumps off of the table onto the outside. I like that. I wish you could do suicide dives in this game. Same like in the 3D version, but sadly not. But, eh, that's where. Silas Young can go back inside the ring now after an arm but by drops to Sammy Zayn. And now Zayn, he gets inside the ring. On count six. Zayn has Young. Off the ropes goes Silas Young. To a big boot, not gonna be the hulu kick. Warning him, pretend like it's gonna be the hulu kick when he does it running up. And so now, same thing, slingshot to Silas Young. Silas Young not doing so well here against Sammy. And another bit of a bye drop. Light drop, light drop again. So many bit of bye drops in this matchup. Well, by so many, I think that's probably three monkey flip. Sammy saying upper hand on Silas Young. Multiple big boots. Sammy Zane's on fire here. Non stop momentum, but now Silas Young gonna have to try to wear down the momentum with a side hell of takedown. Slowing down the pace of, of the matchup, slowing down the excitement. While this is a horribly raid matchup, I'm actually kind of enjoying this matchup, not gonna lie. I actually won't enjoy this matchup in real life, to be fair. Silas Young and Sammy Zane. It sounds interesting. I'll kind of enjoy the matchup in real life. Anyway, now, Young. I was about to say, you could probably make Sammy submit there, but no saying he got off that. Now a couple strikes from Silas Young. Upper hand, low thrust press, mountain punches, ground and pound. That is a rope break, though. Referee didn't call it that rope break. I don't know why I'm saying he, well, he's just going to slip on the air. And then oversell, slipping on the air, figure for that lock. That's a rope break, though. Sammy had a whole back full of ropes. Ankle lock. Definitely not going to make Young tap out. Hopefully it doesn't. And which it does not. Zane, simple punch to the abdomen. No, Sami Zayn has him. Well, he had him. Oh, come on. Well, fine. Silas Young wins. Sami Zayn. <sighs> right. Sami Zayn just forfeited the matchup. Okay, fine. Here's a weird pattern. First, Brian Cage forfeits his matchup against Silas Young on week 9. Then, Sami Zayn forfeits his matchup against Silas Young here on week 10. Why is everyone forfeiting against Silas Young? Anyway, now, moving on to backstage. And here we go. Okay, then. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your number contender for the x champion, Cody Rhodes. He's just hit, he just hits Ricochet, a.k.a. Prince Puma. We have Ricochet dressed up as Prince Puma, but we're going to call him Ricochet. Since saying Prince Puma, it's going to take a while to say in the wrestling matchup. So we're just going to call him Ricochet, even though he's dressed up as Prince Puma. Nails the crossroads, does Rhodes. Puma not going to sell it, and another crossroads. Cody Rhodes, perhaps, sending a message to your x division champion, Prince Puma. Ricochet. Cody Rhodes, of course, he is your number one contender. He did win the number one contender's matchup on week seven. Ironically enough, it was a battle row as well. We love our battle rows here in this universe mode. I always I always do. Even in the GWE universe mode, I love to do battle rows. So, yeah, that was that. I love I love it in this game. So, anyway, now, here we go. The matchup I care about. I actually did enjoy that Zane and Young matchup. I wish it, that matchup ended, to be fair. Anyway, number one contenders for W Championship 10. Man, Battle Royale. In those Battle Royale, but still, funky action was got eliminated from Randy Orton. So much action caught here. Sinister Connect more. He's holding onto his face. Roman's on the corner. Okay, this this is going too fast. There we go. Roman Reigns. Got, he got eliminated by what? Randy Orton, I believe. Well, well Rain, Roman Reigns first one to get eliminated here in this matchup. Wow. And Sinister Connect more is going to eliminate Randy shortly after. Well, both Randy Orton and Roman Reigns, they're not going to become known contender. They're not going to face off against Bobby Lashley. Odds now have now gone a little bit closer and closer for each one of these wrestlers as we're now down from 10 to 8. And, well, just a short couple of seconds going into a minute probably now. Probably already on a minute. I don't know. I could check the timer in the bottom for this, for well, the game's timer, but sometimes that's a little bit too fast. Our time is a little bit too slow at this point since the speed is increased up than more than normal. It's going to be a little bit too fast. So now Paul Cruz knows that Powerbomb and AJ Styles. 
But real, imagine if he wins this one. Imagine if Nakamura wins this one. Imagine if Styles wins this one. Or Tyson Kidd or Magnus. Or The Miz. Or Paul Cruz. Well, CM Punk, if he wins this one, well, then he's just going to get another shot at the WWE Championship. He is your former WWE Champion. There goes Tyson Kidd via The Miz. And The Miz. Imagine how it would be to just go from changing for the Incarnate Hotel to fairing that winning it to winning the WWE Championship. But first, it will have to be in the terms of him changing for the WWE Championship. Paul Cruz, he lost his Incarnate Championship in the fail for elimination matchup at the live on the MG pay-per-view event that included MVP Alex Shelley and the Miz. Of course, Shelley, he's currently your Incarnate Champion. So, but that's something else for different storylines. This right here, the WWE Championship. Styles nails the 450 splash, sort of on the real. So that was pretty. Nails a leave the ET, connects with it to an MA style switch along to the real. But now, ladies and gentlemen, just imagine Paul Cruz, if he actually does win this one, has two golds. Next more, he gets away from both Magnus and the Miz. Those two heel, those two heels. That would be a great tattoo in real life, to be fair. But imagine Paul Cruz wins this one, going from having the Incarnate Championship to losing it, then to having the Dode Championship. Of course, if he does even win this matchup, to change for it. And of course, if he does even beat Bob Lashley. But we're thinking ahead here. Got yeah, first face the problem at hand, and that's focusing on who is gonna win this battle royal in the first place. As we're down to five, I believe AJ Styles. That really, that really struggled to say Styles. My bad. We got the Miz, a bird real CM Punk, Apollo Crews, and AJ Styles, and Magnus. So we're down to six. We just don't see Magnus on our side of the screen yet. There we go. Now we do. So the real Styles, Magnus, Crews, Miz, Punk. Okay. Found six. We have now gone four eliminated. Now, uh, Edge Styles has a bird reel in the Styles Clash. I know that it's a pair great, but just pretend it's Styles Clash because that is Styles' finisher. Styles' finisher in the game is, and well, he's just gonna hit Styles Clash again on their reel. Bird reel getting wrecked by these Styles Clashes. Wow. Um. Anyway, AJ Styles, of course, his finisher is Styles Clash in real life, but in the game, since they don't have an actual, I don't know, animation for Styles Clash or something like that, you could like. Uh, do a mod of it or something like that to make it look like Styles Cash. I don't know. But we are gonna sell for Pedigree because that is his finisher. So basically it's supposed to be a Styles Clash. I feel like it would have been better if it was like a power driver or some sorts. But uh it's what our we got the real Magnus and we well ladies and gentlemen, Miz. The Miz, he was your former number one contender for your current championship uh, um during week four. And during the pay per view, in which he did not win against, um, at that time, Intercontinental Champion Apollo Crews. I am struggling so much to talk here. I literally got nothing else to talk about. But we did have Apollo Crews successfully defend his IC title against Miz. So Miz getting a little bit of payback there by eliminating Apollo Crews, making sure he does not get another set of gold added to his waist. That one being the WWE Championship. Well, he's got another top opportunity in general, to be fair. Final five now. Miz, the real punk, Styles, and Magnus. So we're getting closer and closer to figuring out who'll face off against Bobby Lashley. If CM Punk wins this one again, well, then he'll face off against Lashley. Try to win back his WWE Championship that Punk never lost. Punk didn't get pinned in the triple threat matchup. It was Roman Reigns who got pinned in the triple threat matchup by Bobby Lashley in the triple threat matchup at the Live from the Street pay per event. Which was during what week? During week eight, so yeah. Punk he never got pinned, so probably wants to win back the WWE title that he never lost. Styles missing the WX handle. Basically hidden air. Seeing Punk and AJ Styles. That matchup happened before in Ring of Honor. For those of you guys that say, Oh, CM Punk versus AJ Styles is a dream match that never happened. Yeah, um it happened in Ring of Honor. So did CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. Anyone else remember twenty fourteen? Now, of course, well, Seth Rollins is way better currently in 2017. You know, it still happened. Same Punk and Seth Rollins still happened. We just, all, we just all forget about these awesome, iconic matches. And we say about, oh, this is happened. You know, Punk and Rollins basically happened. Styles and Samoa Joe happened. Styles and Aries. Aries and Joe. Aries and Punk. These are matches that that's happened before. Okay. Anyway, going back to humorous mode. I think one of the ones that I said were, was a lie. For one of them. Aries and... No, never mind. All of them were true. Never mind. Anyway. 
CM Punk now. That's Bird Real up. GTS. Bird Real getting wrecked now. And here we go. And CM Punk on our GTS. The Real. Verge can eliminate a high knee strike. Another high knee strike. And a third. CM Punk absolutely just wrecked a Bird Real. I like that. I, c- I could find that happening. Like, if that ever happened when CM Punk and Bird Real are fought, like Battle Royale or Order Royal Rumble. Or like any order top rope elimination connected thing. I can find CM Punk eliminating the real or anyone else for that matter. In that type of manner. So I like that. And there goes the miss off the back suplex from Magnus. We're down to three. Magnus. Styles. And former W champion CM Punk Mag- Magnus and Styles. They almost got eliminated there. Of course Magnus could have thrown Styles out from the ring. Out from inside the ring to the outside ring. And Magnus could have fell off the ring apron. CM Punk now upper hand on AJ Styles with Magnus holding onto his face there. Magnus is now busted open. Former WWE Champion CM Punk definitely wants to win this one. He's definitely probably the most hungriest. AJ Styles now, of course, him, he was in the tag team with Shinsuke Nakamura. They had tag team rivalry against um, Untaker and Kane. They've lost both. They've lost all the two matches. All the two tag team matches against um, Undertaker and Kane. So... They're going back to singles action right now. Of course, Nakamura. Um, not going to become number contender. Styles, he could become number contender. CM Punk now on the verge of getting eliminated. Or AJ Styles as well. Both these men. Precarious position for both. And now Magnus, we could have... Well, never mind. And now, wait, what, what's happening? Everyone's reversing everything. Okay, that was confusing. CM Punk, former WWE champion, is eliminated. We are going to have a number contender. And it's going to be Magnus. Or AJ Styles. Because, well, at this point, former WWE Champion CM Punk, he's not going to face off or get his shot at the WWE Championship again. Well, at least not at the next Raw pay-per-view, which is too fair after, well, during week 12, necessarily. So, AJ Styles versus Bobby Lashley, or Magnus versus Bobby Lashley. Either way, it's going to be TNA. It's going to be a TNA matchup, but CM Punk and AJ Styles just reversing everything. That was confusing. Like, Styles or Punk reversed her Karana. and there one reversed the back suplex. It was confusing. And there goes Magnus off the monkey flip. AJ Styles out of nowhere. Not going to lie, that one caught me off surprise. AJ Styles, the monkey flip to Magnus. Magnus goes flying out of the ring. And AJ Styles is number one contender. For the WWE Championship. He'll face off against the WWE Championship by Lashley. At Raw's next pay-per-view. Which is going to be like during week 12. After week 12 Raw and stuff like that. It'll still necessarily be during week 12. You guys get the idea. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Humorous Mode. That was Raw week 10. Next up going to be ECW. So we're going to have the ECW pre-show. And then after that the whole ECW um, ECW regular show. And ECW, they're back to having five matches. Before we had them at five, then we shrunk them down to four just for use of doing something. And then after that, I just finally decided to make ECW have their five matches again so they could have longer episodes. So, hopefully they do have longer episodes than usually their 20-minute episodes that they've had with those four matches. Hopefully. I believe week 9 also was only 18 minutes. So that was less than 27 minutes. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Hopefully we we'll get to half an hour with East. Though, but hardcore matches in Brooklyn Revolution tend to go by fairly quickly. So yeah, that's that. And thank you guys for watching this episode of Universe Mode. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.